Hello, I'm Dr. Vishesh Sharma. In this video, I will discuss digital modulation methodology, uh, which is phase shift keying. So let us start phase shift keying. Uh, as I've already discussed in the previous videos, that there are basically two types of uh, modulation, digital modulation methodologies. Number one is the baseband digital transmission methodology, and second one is the bandpass digital uh, modulation methodology. Baseband digital modulation are basically uh, the modulation methodology in which uh, we convert our analog uh, uh, analog signaling which is actually I am um, talking about analog means uh, time varying signal message signal to the digital signal uh, in this uh, baseband means actually baseband is uh, related to related term with the message or raw data right so that's why the baseband digital modulation methodology do not involve any carrier component for the transmission in which in this method methodology you transmit analog signal to uh, from transmitter to receiver with the help of wired media but in case of uh, band pass digital modulation uh, you have to use a carrier signal for the transmission actually the band pass digital modulation requires a carrier signal generated with the help of local oscillator this band pass modulation methodology is used where we have to transmit the digital data wirelessly from transmitter to receiver end so as in this video i am going to discuss the psk now it the question is psk is which type of modulation like either it is a band pass or band uh, band baseband as the name suggest the phase so in this digital modulation methodology we change the phase of the carrier with respect to the input data stream bits right so in phase shift keying one property which is the phase for that carrier is going to change with the help of data that means digital data so this is the generalized block diagram for a digital modulation you have a source of digital data actually that source behind that source there is a there may be a baseband digital modulation method either it may be a dm or pcm where you have, where you convert your analog uh, data to its equivalent digital baseband data right so once you have digital baseband data then it is act like a source source encoder is required either if you want to consider a single bit for a single symbol or you have to consider multiple bits for a single symbol if if you want to remove isi or something else then uh, you, or channel encoder is required then modulator transmitter antenna then channel where awgn that is additive white gaussian noise is considered and add the noise component uh in the channel accordingly receiver antenna receives the signal demodulator process and so on all the reverse processes which is used at the transmitter end so this is the generalized uh, block diagram representation of a digital modulation technique in phase shift keying we vary the phase shift of the carrier signal to represent the digital data so in this case the bandwidth required is same as transmitted by the BASK signal. So PSK is much more robust than ASK. Why? Because I am transmitting, or you can say I am just changing the phase, and phase is not not a parameter. It can easily be affected by the Gaussian noise. So that's why PSK is more robust in comparison of ASK. Because ASK in ASK you can change the property, which is the amplitude of the carrier. So noise affects the carrier amplitude or you can say signal amplitude in more than in comparison to frequency of phase so in psk as it is more robust than esk it is not vulnerable to noise which changes the amplitude of the signal so this is the pictorial presentation for a psk you can clearly see that when the bit stream is changes from 1 to 0 you can see a uh, phase is changing about pi right that is 180 degree Right. Similarly, when zero to one, there is another change, phase change, and so on. When the two continuous one is transmitted, then there will be no change. If uh, two consecutive ones or zeros are transmitted, then there will be no change. 
the change in the phase will happen only when there is a transfer between 1 to 0 or 0 to 1. So this is the bandwidth. You will clearly see that the ESK having the same bandwidth as ESK. Why it is happening? I am just going to describe in the second slide. So this is the BPSK modulator. 1, the frequency is cos of 2 pi f1 t. Let us suppose. You can clearly see that 1 is same frequency contained, 0 is just showing a change in the phase or something else. You can also say that if this is the this section is 1, then it will be cos of 2 pi f1 t or we can also consider it as sin of 2 pi f1 t. This is the angle. And this part will be considered as minus of sine 2 pi f1 t. Why it is minus? Because this is an amplitude change, right? So we can also write it as sine of 2 pi f1 t plus pi for this change, 0. So you can also say that 1 is transmitted by this type and 0 is transmitted. Every time 0 will be represented by this carrier frequency with phase difference pi. This is a simple multiplication, but point to be noted as I have already said that uh, BPSK has the same bandwidth as BSK. You will clearly see that uh, uh, that this is plus one, this is minus one. So uh, when you multiply your cosine or sine wave, the any electromagnetic signal in mean some frequency, or you can say sine of two pi f one t, uh, you can clearly obtain that when one is positive, one is multiplied by any of any one of them then you will get, let us suppose sine is our electromagnetic wave, then you can clearly that uh, get positive 1. When you multiply positive 1 into this one, you will definitely get sine of 2 pi f1 t. But if you are talking about the minus 1, then you will definitely get minus 1 sine of 2 pi f1 t. So we can see that in case of uh, BASK, multiplier is similarly present here, oscillator is similarly present here, and this uh, time domain representation uh, representation was different, but in this case BPSK, uh, you are using uh, uh, NRZ, but this NRZ line coding is polar now. So if you are uh, if you want to uh, use the same modulation methodology for BPSK, you have to first convert your unipolar data, unipolar bit stream to polar. So that will be happening when unipolar to polar converter, unipolar to polar converter. You have to convert from unipolar to polar, then you will get polar and RZ, right? So once you have polar and RZ, then you will uh, do the same uh, technique or modulation methodology as you had used already using BASK. So BPSK and BSK are almost similar, only the difference is the presentation of digital data at the input uh, of the multiplier. So in BPSK, you are using a NRZ polar, but in BASK, it was NRZ unipolar. Right. So this is the BPSK demodulator. Uh, this is the received BPSK signal, and this is the generated carrier signal. Uh, actually, this will be generated with the help of local oscillator. Right. Uh, now, point to be noted: uh, Is there any uh, non-coherent methodology available for BPSK? No. The answer is no. Because uh, once when you use a rectifier, a wave rectifier, to extract the information, you cannot. Uh, extract the information with the help of phase because what will happen then a rectifier will cut the uh, negative uh, portion of the signal so you will only get only this one right you will not you will not receive any phase information if you cut the negative part of the signal so that's why i'm saying vpsk uh, demodulator will not be a non synchronous demodulator right that means there is a single demodulation methodology available for vpsk demodulator is coherent coherent demodulation methodology is only available ma demodulation method for BPSK. So that's why BPSK is uh, more robust, no doubt it is more robust in comparison of ASK but the receiver architecture is costlier in comparison of BSK because of this local oscillator uh, uh, and synchronization methodologies or circuitries. Right? Other than this, from this point to this point, this uh, is a block diagram of a correlator correlator as I have already told you. This is a correlator which is a combination of a switch t equal to tb or t or t because here I have mentioned t so this t is nothing but the bit duration. And after that there should be a 
LPF. LPF is what is LPF? LPF is an integrator, right? So this is you can clearly see an integrator here. So LPF is an integrator. So this uh, combination is considered as a correlator, which is represented in a single block diagram. And after that, this section is the threshold detector. Threshold detector, right? Or you can say the decision making device. Decision making device. Now I am going to conclude the PPSK. The phase shift keying is the digital modulation technique in which the phase of the carrier signal is changed by varying the sine and cosine input at a particular time. PSK technique is widely used for wireless LAN, biometric, contactless operation along with RFID and Bluetooth communication. PSK is of basically two types. One is the binary phase shift keying and QPSK. One actually these are the two main techniques but other than this MPSK or 8PSK, 16PSK this is the symbolic representation if you are using M is equal to 8 then it will be 8PSK if you are using M is equal to 16 then it will be 16PSK so that is uh, in quadrature, uh, quadrature PSK your M is equal to 4 that means you are using uh, 4 symbols that means two the combination of 2 bit represent 1 symbol for QPSK quadrature phase shift key 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 so if it is 0 then phase difference for 0 1 let us suppose this is pi by 2 this will be pi this will be 3 pi by 2 so you can clearly see that the gap between these three uh, uh, symbols uh, transmission symbols will be pi in the in the carrier representation so this is also the called uh, actually Q uh, this is also called 2 PSK 2 PSK means the binary right M is equal to 2 it will be considered as BSK B uh, PSK right if M is equal to 4, it will be QPSK. Other than this, M, MPSK, that means M representing the symbol, right? Or M is equal to 2 to the power N, where N is the number of bits, right? In a single symbol. BPSK is basically a double side band suppressed carrier, right? Uh, actually, uh, why I am saying so? Because it is a BASK. So, BASK is your uh, DSB, right? The double side band suppressed carrier means uh, so that's why I'm saying so. so BPSK is a DSBSC because it also includes a modulation methodology uh, which is BSK. Right? And the type is quadrature phase shift king, as I've already discussed. This is the phase shift king technique in which the sine wave carrier takes four phases reversal, such as 0, 90, 180, and 270. And this is uh, this is 0, this is 90, this is 180, and this is 270. Right? If this kind of technique are further extended, PSK can be done by 8, that is M is equal to 8 and 16, that means M is equal to 16 values also depending upon the requirement. This is the bandwidth of the PSK modulated signal. You can clearly see that this is the carrier frequency, carrier center frequency. Other than this, uh, this shape is because of the line, line coding technique. Uh, you can uh, study the line coding in the uh, next semester but uh, right now I am just representing a pictorial presentation of uh, the spectrum of the BPSK signal right so uh, this is the frequency this is the power this is the PSD actually this is the PSD graph right you can clearly obtain the bandwidth with the help of this PSD graph right so from this point to this uh, let us suppose then it will be the bandwidth of the PSK other than this in generalized form the uh, bandwidth requirement of PSK and BASK, right? BPSK and BSK will be the same. It will be given by 1 plus D into S. So, in this video, this was the BPSK. Thank you. Thanks a lot.